welcome to Books Alive. I'm Miss Kara. This is a book talk for kids in grades three through five. I have a stack of books here I'm going to share with you. I've got some fiction, I've got some nonfiction, and I have a graphic novel. Hopefully you'll find something in this stack to enjoy, but if not, you can always ask us at the library. It's our job to help you find your next favorite book. So up first I have The Girl Who Speaks Bear by Sophie Anderson. Um, this book is a uh, fairy tale, a fantasy, and an adventure all rolled into one. It's a retelling of um, two different folk tales from Eastern Europe and Russia sort of mixed together. And in it, our main character um, was found as a two-year-old outside of a bear cave and adopted and taken down into the village. And every year they have a big festival in the village um, when winter is over and spring starts to arrive. Uh, but everything is still covered with snow because where they live, um, it's kind of up north and it's very snowy for a very long time. So the day before the big festival in the village, um, our main character is outside and a bird comes up to her and starts to tell her that she doesn't belong in the village, she belongs in the woods. And so that gets her to thinking and then at the festival, all kinds of things go wrong and she feels like the only way for her to figure out her place in the world is to pack up all of her stuff and travel into the woods. And she meets all kinds of forest creatures and she has all kinds of adventures. Uh, if you're looking for um, a nice cozy escape during the doldrums of winter, this is a really great book. The Girl Who Speaks Bear. Up next we have the Canyon's Edge by Dusty Bowling. She wrote The Extraordinary Events in the Life of a Cactus. So if you've read that, um, it's the same kind of writing style, but this one is a mix of poems and um, verse. And in this book, our main character, um, her name is Nora, and she and her dad are going to hike in a canyon uh, on her birthday. A year ago from this day, her mother died. So it's just her and her dad, and they're having a real hard time adjusting to life with just the two of them. So her dad decides that they're gonna go hike in this canyon um, as her birthday gift. And while they're down in the canyon, there is a flood. And she gets separated from her dad, and she encounters a poisonous snake and a poisonous scorpion. She doesn't have any uh, supplies. She's got no food. She's got no water. She doesn't have sunscreen. She doesn't have a hoodie to put on when it gets cold at night. Um, it's a really compelling story. I had a hard time putting it down. If you like the I Survived books, you are going to love this one. So that's The Canyon's Edge by Dusty Bowling. All right. So The Van Gogh Deception by Darren Hicks. Um, this is a blue stem, so it's got the little blue tab on it. So if you're reading the blue stem books this year, you'll find this on our blue stem shelf. We also have a ebook copy available to you. And in this one, um, it takes place in Washington, D.C. Uh, you start out in the National Gallery of Art and a boy appears out of nowhere. Um, he's about 12 years old, uh, he's got blonde hair, but he can't remember anything about where he was or what his name is, he's got amnesia. So the police take him in and they put him in a foster family overnight, um, hoping that he, his memory will start to come back and they can reunite him with his family. Um, and he thinks that if he goes back to the gallery, he'll start to remember things. And when he goes back to the gallery, he realizes that he's in some kind of trouble. So there's these guys that are uh, after him for something, but he doesn't know what. And he and his new friend get kidnapped and then they escape a kidnapping and they're trying to figure out the mystery of who he is and why these guys are after him. It's a really fast paced adventure. Um, and then there's also in here, if I can find an example. There's also these QR codes that you can scan while you're reading the book um, and it will bring up the artwork that, that they're talking about in the book, which is kind of a fun addition that gives you a, a little extra visual. Um, so I really like this one. It's really fast paced. Um, if you read Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library, uh, you, you're gonna like this one too. So that's The Van Gogh Deception by Darren Hicks. All right, up next I have a nonfiction book for you, and it's called Pet That Dog, and it's by Gideon Kidd and Rachel Bronigan. 
And I like this book um, because it's got really short chapters. There's a lot of really fun illustrations. And it's got things in here like understanding canine body language, which is super helpful. Um, and then it also has stories of amazing dogs from history. Um, and it talks about like, well, what if I'm allergic to dogs, but I still want a dog. So it's, a, it's not a very big book, but there's a lot of information packed in here, a lot of really great stories. And it's just a fun book. If you like dogs, highly recommend this book, Pet That Dog. Now we have a graphic novel. It's called Timo the Adventurer, and it is by Jonathan Garnier and Johan Sacred. And in this book, our friend Timo um, has read every book in his village. There are no more books. So he decides that rather than reading about adventures, he's going to pack all his stuff and he's going to leave the village and he's going to go on an adventure of his own. But we soon discover, as he is traveling, that he does not really know a lot about the world outside of the village. So he meets like this giant spider creature and he meets the guardian of the village and he keeps traveling further and further and he gets lost and then he winds up in this abandoned temple and he frees this guy. And so throughout the rest of the book, you have to figure out why was this guy trapped in a temple? And is Timo ever gonna make it home? Because he is totally lost at this point. <clears throat> uh, if you like the Amulet books, if you like Hilda, you're gonna love this book. It um, starts out slow and then by like maybe page 10, you're just totally hooked. Our last book, Nonfiction, huge, mythopedia. So it's like an encyclopedia of mythical creatures. And the reason I like this one is because there's a lot of creatures in there and they are from all over the world. So we've got stuff from the Americas, stuff from Asia, stuff from Africa, stuff from Oceania. So that's like Australia and the islands around there. Um, and the illustrations are gorgeous. Look at this. And it's really just like a page, page and a half, up to two pages that tell you um, the stories associated with these mythical creatures. Um, and it's just a fun, fun book to sort of flip through and pick and choose, you know, what you want to read about. So that is Mythopedia. It's an encyclopedia of mythical beasts and their magical tales. So it's a short list this year, um, but that's okay. Again, if you didn't see anything there that you liked, you can always ask us for recommendations. Um, it's our job to help you find your next favorite book. I hope you enjoyed something in this deck, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.